Figure it out. Hello, this is Adam Carlick with Flying and Eating. Today, let's go somewhere and do something. And make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Hey everyone, it's Adam here. On the last two episodes of Flying and Eating, I went down to Puerto Rico, which is U.S. territory in the Caribbean. I went swimming, I ate a bunch of stuff, and I checked out some weird sodas. Today, though, we're finally going to go out and actually see some real touristy stuff. Good morning, or buenos dias. It is day four here in Puerto Rico. Uh, I apologize for the kind of the end of the previous section. Uh, I did not end up going to dinner. I just ended up having a bunch of sodas and some bread rolls, which I know is kind of anticlimactic, but whatever. But I'm gonna make it up to you. Uh, I'm gonna head out to this little bistro thing that looked really good, very Americanized breakfast. Again, we are in the States, technically. Um, and, you know, I've asked around, I guess in Puerto Rico there is no such thing really as a traditional Puerto Rican breakfast, so... But there's still, like, combinations and things. So, let's say a Puerto Rican take on the quote-unquote traditional American breakfast is kind of what I'm aiming for, but who knows? This bistro might surprise me, I might be like, oh, that, that's the thing. Let's go find out. My decision has been made. I'm gonna get the Freddy Perez omelet, which is fried pork with onions, sweet plantains, uh, and mayo chip and whatever the hell that is. But it also, I'm gonna get a side of Oreo pancakes because fat. Wow, food has arrived. This is a lot bigger than I thought it was gonna be. Uh, but yeah, I got an omelet with plantains I showed you guys before and the Oreo pancakes. Wow. That place was great. Um, but mixed bag. Food was really good. But huge. I didn't even come close to finishing that. Like I got through the omelet and like halfway through the pancakes and I was just like, I can't do this. Like I'm fat, but even I'm not this fat. So, but the food was fantastic. What? Service was fine. So I usually don't notice that too much because I'm very patient. Uh, but it was kind of sporadic because you had like four different people attending to you. Um, whatever, that was fine. Uh, the only the only issue I had with this place, like for real issue, is I ordered a water and I got a bottle of water, which I didn't want. I would just take a tap water. Why do I care about that? Tap water's free, bottled water's not. This is part of the U.S., so technically they have to give you a, a thing of tap water. It just it felt a little misleading, but whatever. Aside from that, good place. I'd recommend it. As we walk, I thought I would tell you a little bit about today's plan. After the breakfast, uh, the goal is simple. Get back to the hotel, take a shower, clean myself up, because we're still in that nice, mellow warmth at the beginning of the day where it's very tolerable for someone with my pasty complexion to be able to function. But after that, around noon, I'm gonna meet up with this dude named Julio who hit me up on Instagram and said, hey man, I'm a fan of the channel. If you're doing anything, let me know. Uh, I had no specific plans, but uh, then I thought, that's a good idea. We could get together, we could hang out, and he wanted to take me to some video game stores, show me some restaurants, stuff like that. So I thought, hey, that's a good plan. Let's go ahead and do that. If you guys saw my Point Roberts, Washington video, you'll notice in that video I talk about how that's one of the few spots in the U.S. that actually measures gas by liters because they're so basically part of Canada while still being part of the U.S. Turns out there's another part. Puerto Rico measures in, in uh, liters. Who knew? Well, they knew. I didn't know. My bad. I really like the shape of the tree. It just kind of grew into the building. I, I, whatever. <laughs> So here's a little fun one. I don't know who remembers this out there, but I used to work on a show, a YouTube show called Chad Vader. That might bring back memories for some old people. Um, and in season three, they had a, we had a deal with Jaritos to give us tons of this. I have never seen that one. Mexican Cola, straight up. That's cool. I also never heard of Jamaica. I know we had the mango one, we had that. I think we had guava, but Jamaica? I'm not sure what that's supposed to be. Mexican Cola, straight up. I would get this if I didn't already have so many sodas. So we've got uh, a local soda, if you want to try that, that is made in Puerto Rico. Um, although it's based in New York, but whatever, it's from here, I guess. We've got pineapple flavored and we've got China flavored, which I, based on naranja, which is orange, this must be orange flavored. So what I think happened is they took the term Mandarin, which means orange, but the Chinese word for it, and then mistranslated it or something. So my girlfriend is finally coming back. She's been with her friends for the last, like, day or so. Uh, and I think I'll briefly see her right before Julio picks me up, but I decided to be the good boyfriend. I want to do something nice for her. And as I told you, she has uh, lactose intolerance problems, unfortunately, but I know she likes certain combinations, so I got her this chocolate almond milk that will be waiting for her in the fridge with an additional bonus, uh, the coconut whipped cream. Uh, she really, this just was like, holy crap, I didn't know this existed, I want to try this, so that'll be waiting. I'm gonna get uh, good boyfriend points, I think. I hope. 
Hey, I'm with Julio. What's up? Hey, and uh, he was cool enough to pick me up. So we're going to Old San Juan, right? Yeah, we're going to see El Morro and a couple of stuff over there, yeah. Yeah, so we'll show you some touristy stuff. And uh, I don't know, we'll see what else comes of that. We are now walking around Old San Juan, yeah. And uh, we're going to go look at the castle thing. Morro. That's what it is? Yeah, it's like a castle slash defensive uh, place for uh, pirates and stuff like that. It was built by the Spanish? Yeah. Yeah, by Spanish. There you go. Okay, so this is probably by design, and I was telling him this. The way this place feels, it feels like Havana if Havana wasn't stuck in 1958. Yeah. Because, like, the design is, it makes sense. They were both Spanish colonies, born basically at the same time, and liberated from Spain at the exact same time. <laughs> it's just that one was kept by the United States, and I told you the guys in the earlier part of the video, Cuba was only part of the U.S. for two years and then let go. And, you know, history goes in different directions. Yeah. <laughs> so here is a perfect example of what I'm talking about. This is Spanish colonial design, but modernized. This is Puerto Rico. Right here, Spanish colonial design. This is Havana, except the entire place looks like, I'm not trying to make fun of Havana. Havana was very nice. But I'm just saying, you can see right here the evolutionary path of being with the states versus not being with it. Julio here is treating me to a torta de coco piña, which is like a pineapple coconut cookie type of thing. Yeah. So thank you very much. Yeah, you do. Yeah. For you, man. I will, I will make sure to eat this and get fatter later. <laughs> okay, for those who saw the St. Louis video, you know the advantage to cobblestone roads. If it freezes, you won't slip, unlike there where you will, except we're in Puerto Rico, so it never freezes. Guys, that is a lot of birds. This kind of reminds me of when I was down in Dallas and we found birds pooping all over our car. But uh, it's a little nicer though, nicer scenery. Is this just like a special thing? The birds always just hang out here? <laughs> this is kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, but they're so specifically cut. It's like they respect this chain. They're like, we don't really go beyond the chain much. We just stay there on our side. It's kind of cool. Hey, here comes the tourists. <laughs> okay, so we're at, where are we at? Morro. All right, explain to me what this is. This is a Spaniard castle built in 1532, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and it was built to protect the island from uh, pirates and different attacks from other countries and stuff like that. And um, yeah, it's been here a long time ago. <laughs> so basically, as soon as the Spanish showed up, they wiped out the natives and then built this. Uh, in a cruel way, yeah. <laughs> yeah, let me, let, let's just be, keep it real. That's what happened. That's what happened. I'm sorry, that's history. We didn't make it up. That's what happened. The Spanish showed up, they colonized, and they ruined everything. So we've got the Spanish nipple, right? That's what that is. And apparently people pee in there a lot. So naturally, we're going inside. Let's, uh, let's go for it here. Got a nice ocean view there. Oh, that looks really nice. I like that. And, uh, yeah, that does smell like urine. He is not kidding. That does smell. That smells, dude, that smells a lot like pee. You are not joking. But look at that. The water looks great. It's pretty cool, like, yeah. You're like, in Spain, you're going to go and see that. So, yeah, Spanish fort, they would defend from this position. Obviously, they lost. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> but, and now we got this coastline. That is an amazing looking coastline. Um, if you guys saw my Saipan video, it looks a lot like that, except way more developed than Saipan was. But, yeah, then over there, you got the actual fort, and you can see the flag. So, you got the Puerto Rican flag. It looks like the Spanish flag of the time behind it. Am I wrong? The white, the, the red X and the white, so, yeah. and then the American flag there. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm pointing at it. <laughs> sorry, I'm just noticing the footage. I'm probably pointing at the wrong spot. But you guys know what I'm saying. And then we have a guy standing up there. That's cool. So we made our way up from the pea nipple, got up here, and now you can see the rest of the base, the fort. We'll head, we'll head this way. And then, look at that. It's a nice view. Great view out there. I highly recommend this area. I mean, there's a, I think there's a reason the Spanish picked it. It's a pretty good defensible position. You know, upper high ground. It's over Anakin. I have the high ground. Yeah, you guys understand Star Wars references. But anyway, so, uh, look, birds. And more nipples. I, I seriously don't know the function of that. Is that purely just like... Yeah, I mean, I know that, but like, why design it to look like nipples? Maybe they like I guess you can't fault them for that. All right. <laughs> that would be the entrance, right? Uh, yeah, over there. Okay. And if you wanted to go do the tour, which we're not really going to do, because I'll leave that to you guys in your imagination, come here and experience it yourself. Look at all those flags. You can experience all that stuff in one place. And he's telling me there's a big torture dungeon down there. Which, uh, yeah, again, if you like that kind of thing, you can do that. 
We'll uh, see some golf carts, U.S. park rangers. That is such a great view. The camera's not gonna do any of this justice, but hopefully you guys like it. I think it looks neat. Wow, what a great view. And you know, uh, again, a humble reminder um, to my fellow Americans. You know, your, your country is bigger than you think. It's not just the 50 states, you know, for, for better or worse reasons, whatever you care about the history or the politics of it, whatever, there are other parts of this country there's a good chance you've never been to. Puerto Rico, U.S. Virgin Islands, Guam, Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands, even American Samoa, all the way out there, the only part of the U.S. down in the Southern Hemisphere, closer to New Zealand than it is to Hawaii, <laughs> but it is part of America. And as an American, if you are one, it is part of your country, and you can go there and enjoy it at any time. So our time in old San Juan has come to an end. Yep. Uh, thank you, Julio, for showing me around this area. Um, it's a very nice area. You guys should come check it out. Like, it's kind of an obvious tourist spot. I think it's kind of interesting historically that you can be like, I mean, look at it from the Spanish perspective. They built this as a defensive apparatus because they were like, oh, you know, foreigners will come in or we have to protect our position, whatever. And now it's like, oh, look, let's make soccer fields out of it. It's just like, history's weird, like how stuff can just change over time. But either way, very cool area, highly recommend it. So, so our plan, sweaty, fat me's, big, yeah, you like that? Spanish GPS. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, look at my hair. What's wrong with me? Uh, it's because it was a bit of Windy Castle. Leave me alone. Um, anyway, we were going to go to a video game store, but they're all closed now. Our bad. So it doesn't really matter. We're gonna, he's, he's hungry. I'm not. That breakfast you guys saw, it's, it's still sitting there. I couldn't finish that thing. It's still <laughs> sitting there. Um, but I am very thirsty, so I think that's going to happen. We're back. At Los Tramos Arepas, because this place is great and he's never been here. So this is, he got this, what is it? Arepa de Camarone. Alright, what's in it? Uh, it has shrimp, uh, some special sauce, and maybe some onions, and the arepa, that's the covering. Alright man, enjoy. Yeah, thank you. So he tried both sauces, the cilantro sauce and the garlic sauce. And I think we, yeah, he says the, the garlic was better. We were both... for me. Yeah, and, and I... Hey, they're both good sauces. It's funny because we both thought going into it the cilantro would be the winner, but it wasn't. This is this is the winner. Seems pretty happy with it. He had that. I, I think you liked it. Yes. Yeah, it's very good. Yeah. Yeah. Delicious. He says that there's better ones down south. Maybe. Yes. Not on the not on this trip. We just we just don't have time for it. But yeah. maybe maybe we'll come back and maybe we'll do that and it'll be a good time. But now he's gonna be cool enough. He's gonna drop me off back at the hotel. And then I'm gonna hang out with the girlfriend for a while. So, dude, it's been awesome hanging with you. Thank nice you, to meet you bro. Yeah, likewise. Enjoy a lot. Thank you, thank yeah. you. Peace. We have been reunited. Anyway, so we want to get food. She wants mafongo, and I was like, I only have one experience with mafongo, other than U.S. Virgin Islands, which doesn't count. So I'm gonna take her to the good mafongo place because I don't know what else to suggest at this point in the evening. So we're gonna go have a good time. Our mafongo has arrived. We both got the seafood mafongo, which has what in it again? Well, it has calamari, it has shrimp, it has fish, and a bunch of amazing things. Yeah, it, it, it looks really good. And you know who else is really happy about it? The mofongo itself. Look at that. What are the odds? We also got these. These are plantain fritters. I think they're supposed to be savory and sweet at the same time. I guess we'll find out. So, I don't know if this is a mistake or if it's just awesome, but these aren't just fried plantains, like sweet plantains, like basically like bananas. But inside, there's also like beef in there. I, I, I think it's kind of awesome. I think that I, at Puerto Rico, I think you did a thing. So it's worth noting the sauce they include is mayo chup, which, uh, correct me if I'm wrong out there, obviously mayo chup has been a thing for a while, but I had never heard of it until Step Brothers in 2008, the Will Ferrell movie, called it fancy sauce. And I know there's a whole bunch of you out there, particularly in the mainland US, who also first heard of it there. Either way, it's big down here, and it's a very good dipping sauce. These are really good. So we just got back from the restaurant. The girlfriend quite enjoyed her mafongo, as did I. I think I prefer the, the beef one over the seafood, which might be heresy, but that's how I feel. Although the, the surprise was those like, plantain fur things. Those were really good. I don't think they were, I didn't think they would have beef in them, but hey, bonus. It's time for a little dessert. Once again, thank you to Julio for buying me that. Uh, I've opened it up there. And I'm gonna actually try this and see how this goes. This is really good. It's basically like uh, a coconut uh, and pineapple cookie. Like, you know, like the entire build of it is a cookie out of coconut. Now you have to like coconut, obviously, you have to like pineapple, but they had a bunch of different flavors, but I've always liked that. And uh, those together, like in that form, that's really good. 
Uh, I, I think I'm going to be able to down that pretty quickly, but I want to let you guys see it and talk a little bit about it. But, dude, thank you again, Julio, for the, the hookup there. That was really cool of you to do. Good morning, everybody. It's day five here in San Juan, Puerto Rico, and I am with my girlfriend right there. Say hello or don't, whatever. <laughs> no, she did. <laughs> uh, and we are going to go into the beach, enjoy the water, the sun, right here in the morning where there's not really anybody around yet. It's still that mellow warmth time, so I'm going to make the best of it. All right, let's see how the temperature is today. It's cold. Perfect for my Chicago ass. Yeah. That's, I, I said this in the other video, but that's like the coolest thing about the water here is that it's too cold for the locals, too cold for the girlfriend. But for me, <laughs> perfect. I don't mind at all. <laughs> well, there you go. Nice beach, nice day, nice mellow temperature, nice water. I'm gonna go get my, my back slapped by these waves, man. You know, it's a funny story. When I was a kid, we went out to Maui in Hawaii and the, the waves were insane and they were just smacking me constantly and none of the locals were doing this. I was like nine years old, my sister was like eight and that's all we did was just go in the water and get smacked by the waves and then later found out the reason it was so intense and why no one was around is because there was like some sort of hurricane nearby and like we should have died <laughs> like the riptide whatever was way too strong for most people but you may not know it to look at me but i am an incredible swimmer like unbelievable and i can tell you stories about that another time but for me it's cool because this just brings me back to a time in hawaii getting my back slapped a lot by waves but these are nowhere near as intense as those were but then again i do say that through the lens of being a child at the time uh but i also there is no hurricane active here the wind loves my hair. It loves to mess with my hair and make it always look ridiculous. I hope you guys enjoy that. They also, they were cool. Just, they just randomly came over, dug a hole, and put up a gigantic Puerto Rican flag like right where we were based. So, water. <laughs> look at this hair. Um, so we just got back from the beach. Good times. We're gonna go get breakfast soon. Girlfriend's currently cleaning herself up. Then I'm gonna do the same. But in the meantime, I thought I would produce some content for you. I went out and I got one of these. This is an OK Cola champagne i don't know if this is gonna be any good it's supposed to be soda it could be disgusting i get the sense i'm just guessing before i drink this that because of the malta thing there's a population of people here who seem to like the idea of hey i want my alcohol type of drinks to be sodas and not have drink not have alcohol in them maybe like the Malta thing, maybe that's for people who remember beer and like beer, but they can't have it anymore and they just want to still be able to kind of taste it and have it not be as bad for them, but not necessarily the alcohol-free beer. I'm totally speculating on that. And this makes me think that maybe the same concept applies to people for champagne. Or it's just a name and it doesn't taste anything like that. Let's find out. It kind of tastes like a chocolate gummy bear, which can't be right. It's not bad, it's not great. It's not bad though. It's kind of like a very muted Coca-Cola flavor-wise, but it, it has a different, I, I'm seriously getting, ch like if you were to design a chocolate gummy bear flavor, not like a gummy bear covered in chocolate, but a gummy bear that's supposed to taste like chocolate, I think this is that. All right, we are all cleaned up, ready to go. We're gonna go get some breakfast. I also found a gold ring with diamonds or something because that's just what happens to me, right? Yep. He just, I just find money. And I also find garbage, it's called Papa John's. Spoilers, this is where we ended up going. We're going to Bistro Cafe because she didn't get to try it last time and she was super envious of my pancakes and omelets. So we'll see what she gets. So there's quite the weight in there. So we decided we're gonna bounce over here to 787 Coffee, get a drink and just kind of relax until they're ready for us. So we'll see how this goes. So this looks super interesting. So I decided to get a cold brew version of this. We will see if it's any good. Right there. Cheers. It's interesting. It's bitter, but it's got like a spice to it, which is no doubt the rum part. It doesn't actually have rum in it, it's just like the beans are cooked in it. Kind of like the uh, whiskey aged barrel ones you can get like a Starbucks Reserve, which are fantastic. Um, yeah, this is, this is pretty good. Like, I would do this again. Uh, maybe in the future possibly a creamer or something, which is not really my style, but... No, I take that back. I would definitely prefer to keep this a cold brew, but normal people probably want some creamer. 
my food has arrived. I got the Romeo and Juliet, which is French toast with bacon and Nutella, fruit on the side, and I don't know, it just looks like chaotic, awesome goodness. Inside, it's also stuffed with cream cheese. Fantastic. Nice blend of, you know, savory bacon with this Nutella. I don't even need to use the syrup. This is great. The girlfriend got some scrambled eggs there with some avocado and some toast. Looks good. Check it out. Mickey Mouse melted. So we just left. Food was good. Uh, this time I didn't make the mistake of getting way too much food. So I actually finished that. Solid. I mean, it's heavy. You shouldn't eat that stuff, but I did and it was amazing. I can recommend it for sure. Uh, the girlfriend got the scramble, which she quite enjoyed, and they also included that gigantic piece of toast, which is apparently like a thing down here, is toast is like a long, like foot-long strip of bread, and uh, yeah, we're bringing that back to the hotel, we'll enjoy that later, because nah, there's just too much food. If I can say anything about that place, service is a little slow, that's okay, because the food is ridiculous, it's just so much content. So I haven't done a whole lot of driving here, but what little I have done, I've really not enjoyed. Because driving here is kind of like, the rules of the road are a little optional. Yesterday, the girlfriend and I were like, at an intersection up there, and we saw something, you know, a guy do something I've never seen in my entire life. You know, the busy traffic, just like you see right now, and a guy just came in and did a U-turn, like right there, in the middle of traffic. Not, no open space for it, he wedged himself into the situation. And man, do we wish we had filmed that, because we were both just stunned. We'd never seen anybody with that kind of brazen, like, boldness. And, uh, like, you know, there's been moments when I was driving, I'm, like, waiting for a spot to open so I can turn, and everybody behind me hon is honking and stuff, because basically you're not supposed to wait. You're supposed to just force yourself into the situation. To be fair, I was warned a little bit about that before I came here, that driving here is not like the rest of the U.S. <laughs> Let's put it that way. But man, I hate driving, and this is just like, this is, I'm just gonna be honest, of all, I mean, everybody complains that the area they're from or whatever has the worst drivers in the US. I'm sorry, that title, based on my experience, I've been to 55 out of the 56 areas of the United States, meaning 50 states, five territories in DC, and of those 55, Puerto Rico wins the title for the worst driving experience in I have ever seen. I do want to add a little PS to that statement, though, about Puerto Rico having the worst drivers. Let's re it's not necessarily they have the worst drivers, it's more like the worst driving infrastructure, because people just, the, just don't seem to obey the rules of the road. But, that is to this area, that is to San Juan, to represent the entire island, that way it would be a huge disservice. Just like it would be in any part of the mainland when people are like, oh, drivers in New York or whatever are, are really bad. They can't mean the entire state because it's massive. But I, not that I think that that necessarily needs to be said, but there's at least one of you out there who's gonna say, uh, blah, 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 blah. but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> if it's not, at least in San Juan, this area, driving sucks. Good evening. All right, it's time to go get food. We're gonna go to a place called Los Gorditas. I think that's what it's, I'll show you when I get there. Um, basically, from what I can tell, it's like a fast food chain, specifically for Puerto Rico. I don't know much about it. It's just kind of the vibe I got. Uh, I don't expect high quality, but it's what the girlfriend wants. Happy wife, happy life, as they say, even though we're not married. So I just left the Gorditas place. I know I'm gonna come off like a jerk, but I just couldn't eat that. It, it, it came off like a KFC or something. I really don't do fast food. It's very rare. I know I know, I know what I look like. I, I got the memo. But I actually don't eat KFC or fast food in general. I just think it's disgusting. It's terrible for you. It's like, why eat garbage when real stuff exists? Well, in this case, it's because you have a hungry girlfriend who was craving the garbage, so you get it for her. But then I'm going to go see if I can find something else for myself. So uh, this is the result. The uh, carnets something or other, and then the plantains that went with it. Actually, the girl asked me like, what kind of sauce I want with it, and I was honest. I was like, I don't know, it's for a hungry girlfriend. She laughed, and she's like, I'll just give you all three of these. You know, I'm gonna disappoint you guys. I'm just not that hungry. Like, I, I thought maybe I'd wander around, find something, but I'm sitting here be like, I'm force feeding myself at that point, because I'm fat. I don't need, I, I wanna get fatter. Obviously, that's the whole goal of the channel. That's why you guys tune in. But in this case, I'm just like, I truly do not feel like eating anything, so. The girlfriend says that the food is quite good for fast food. It's fast food quality, but like high-end fast food quality, so she's actually pretty happy with it. And I know I left you guys a little disappointed here, so I'm going to make it up to you slightly. I got a local soda. This is a 
uh, Pina Buena. Uh, it's a refreshing drink, is what it says. And it's uh, the pineapple of Puerto Rico. <laughs> so the girlfriend just said this. We both tried it. She had the very valid description. She's like, it's carbonated pineapple juice that doesn't actually have any pineapple juice. So it's just sugar. It's it's very, because basically the way it, it, it tastes, like try out pineapple juice. It tastes the same, except heavily carbonated, but has absolutely none of the medicinal benefits of pineapple juice. It's just sugar garbage. Still, it's not bad. It's just, I wouldn't do it again. But hey, now you know. And that'll do it for this episode of Flying and Eating. Thank you very much for watching. Please stay tuned to the fourth and final part, which will be the conclusion of the adventure, as well as show you guys something very nostalgic that really seems to basically only exist in certain parts of America at this point. That'll make way more sense when we get there. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. As always, please like, comment, subscribe. Follow me on all the social media stuff in the description, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Discord, Patreon, etc. Thank you very much, and I'll see you all later.